Uh, it's been a really long journey, but Scott helped me pass and he helped me do it first time. And um, yeah, all the information with his videos and also learning with him has been really helpful. And I was really nervous, but he's kept me calm and it helped me pass. So yay, now I can drive. <laughs> Right, thank you. That poor man. <laughs> Did he look back? Yeah, he okay. jumped so much. All right, yeah, he looked like he was looking for someone, so I don't know, maybe he thought it was a friend. <laughs> okay, so we do have quite a lot of traffic. Everybody, yes. welcome back. This is Ellie. Ellie's about to do her mock test. Um, Ellie has never used SatNav before, so this is going to be something that's new to you. I'll turn the other SatNav off so that doesn't confuse you. Yeah. Put that there where it's visible, okay? Yeah. But more importantly, before we get started, we have to choose a winner for the free driving <laughs> test. Yes. Yeah. All right, so Ellie's very good at this. Um, so when you're ready, Ellie, please. Nerdrum. Okay, let's show the camera. Yes, <laughs> Nerdrum Ducky. Okay, so let's get that a little closer. So, Nerdjan Daki, if you'd like to just DM me at any of the social media platforms, we'll get your driving test book for you. I hope I said that right. I think we said that right. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm so. pretty confident about that yeah, one. I hope so. <laughs> All right, cool. So, uh, we'll just put this away, and then we're yeah. ready to start your mock test. Great. The sat nav is all pre-programmed, so all we're going to do is start with your independent driving. Mm -hmm. I just need a pen and a bit of paper. So bear with me. Cool. It's a little bit rough, but uh, we're good to go. Do you know I'm quite nervous? I know. It <laughs> kicks in, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I think the cameras, the fact that I've never done a mock test ever. This is all very good points to mention now. Yes. Anything else before we get started? Um, the sat nav, never done the sat nav. Sat nav as well, yeah. And we've got loads of road works around here. So at the moment, this is the kind of route that will probably avoid most of the road works. Mm. Um, so fingers crossed. Um, yeah. It seems like the road works are going to be here to stay for a little while. Mm. Yeah, so, so well, they might... wouldn't go in a couple of days. I doubt it, yeah. yeah. Not the road works I've been days. seeing, no. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, actually, before we get started, I nearly forgot. I need to mention that all minor faults will be up here in yellow, all serious or dangerous driver faults will be up here in red, and I must also ask you your tell me question. So, would you be able to tell me, how would you check to see that your brakes are working before starting the journey? Um, so you'd press the pedal and it shouldn't feel spongy or slack, and as you pull off, the steering shouldn't pull to one side. Perfect. Good answer. Very, very good answer. Okay. So there's a little bit of traffic around here, so take your time. Yeah. When it's safe to do so, I'd like you to drive on and do your best to follow the sat-nav. If yeah. you're not sure, just ask me and I'll do my best to give you directions if it's safe to do so. Okay, okay? thank you. All right, when you're ready. Well, hello there, two-day crew. And if you're new to the channel, for your chance to win a free driving test, you must subscribe and write down in the comments, free driving test. We just announced our winner and the next winner will be announced at 10,000 subs. So for your chance to enter, subscribe and write down in the comments, free driving test. Good okay, luck. So it looks like the sat nav is going back to front. So just ignore if it does tell you to do anything and I'll give you directions just for now. Okay. At the end of the road, I'd like you to turn left, please. Turn left, Chamberlain Way, then turn left. Okay, so it seems to be giving you directions now, so if you After do your best. Yards, turn left, door yeah. can't drive. Love these new electric cars. <laughs> Are you new to driving? Are you looking to find a driving instructor? Are you wondering should I start with manual or automatic driving lessons? Turn well, left. news coming out from the biggest manufacturer of production cars in the world, Ford, have stated that from 2030 onwards, they're only going to be making electric cars. 
All electric cars are automatic and they are the way of the future. So if you're looking to get started, ask yourself, is there a need for you to drive manuals? And if there is, please write it down in the comments below because I don't even think there's a need anymore. With big companies like Amazon, delivery companies, people are thinking, oh, I've got to have a manual license. But nowadays, Amazon are even providing you with automatic vans. So I'm not quite sure where that need still lies. Please write down in the comments below and put me in my place as I am absolutely unaware of any need to drive a manual car anymore. If you disagree with me, please shut me down in the comments and if you agree with me, please give me some feedback because my main concern is to try and orchestrate the quickest and safest way possible for people to learn to drive, making videos like this so people can learn and get tips from the comfort of their own home and safety for free. So if you think that I'm doing the right thing, I need to know guys. And if you think that I'm ranting too much, I need to know guys. Your feedback is the only way that I can make the best videos and the best content for all of you. So please get behind me, sub, write your comments down, and don't forget to like, please guys, because that like shows the YouTube algorithm that this video is good content and it will show more people and help the two-day crew grow. I really appreciate all of you guys supporting me through the years of this channel, and I only wanna make it grow and get better content to you guys so I'm asking for you guys to support me don't forget we're giving the free driving test away as well just subscribe write down in the comments free driving test and I'm here to try and help guys so good luck the road conditions that Ellie is now in are meeting road conditions this is a regular size road for the UK and we have parked vehicles on both sides this means that there's only enough space for one direction of traffic to flow at any one time. Also, we have a blind bend coming up, and around this bend is what I call the tunnel. There is a row of parked cars on both sides of the road, and again, remember, that means that there's only enough space for one direction of traffic at any one time. So if there is oncoming traffic at the start of the tunnel, which is the end of this road, and when you go around the blind bend, you want to anticipate there being a hazard and be ready to slow or stop to deal with this hazard. Ellie knows that the tunnel is here, as the other traffic seems to know as well. And you can see the amount of confusion and limited space for these vehicles in front. Ellie is actually calculating whether it's a good risk to go ahead or to stay stationary where she is and allow the oncoming traffic that's in the tunnel to pass through before continuing. This is called awareness and planning and Ellie is doing an amazing job. She's even waiting for that cyclist which still, regarding it being a small bicycle, doesn't allow Ellie enough space to continue. We must keep at least a meter from hazards at all times if safe to do so. This means roughly a door width from each side of the parked vehicles. We dominate the road that shows oncoming traffic that we're in the tunnel and there isn't space for them to come through. This is also regarded as a signal. Next, Ellie comes to the end of the road and it's on a hill. Before she tries to move off after stopping, she rolls back and on this occasion receives a driver road, fault for control right, foot brake. This car General does have anti-roll technology. If you squeeze the brake a little firmer right. after coming to a smooth, slow stop, this will activate the whole technology, which will not allow the vehicle to roll back. Ellie knows this, yet she doesn't use it on this occasion. In future, she will try to do this on a driving test and as you see, she does complete her driving test successfully and gets that all important blue certificate that tells you you have passed. Freedom! Okay, sometimes examiners might give you instructions here. Mm. So we'll wait and see, because it is extremely busy at the moment. Yeah. I'd like you to go halfway, please. And then just check to see that the traffic on the left or if there's space will take the second half. Thank you.
Top Tips at TikTok is doing extremely well. So if you haven't checked us out on TikTok, really nice cool videos, some fun, some laugh, some serious driver thoughts on real driving tests, and people's opinions in the comment section is fire. So if you guys wanna go check that out, it's doing extremely well at the moment. We've got your top tips at TikTok. So check it out guys, and follow us on all social platforms. You've got your Insta success stories as well. That's where people have just passed after doing their intensive courses at Two Day Pass, tell their story and how it after went. After 200 yards, Go left on the roundabout and take the first exit, A404, Finn Road. Now we all know that everybody hates roundabouts. This time we're turning left, first exit. Not too difficult. However, this roundabout is extremely busy from the right hand side where we need to look and give priority to traffic coming from this direction. When is a safe time to emerge at any junction? The best advice I can give is would you walk out? Sometimes people Go do walk out in dangerous situations and, exit, and to those people I ask them if you have a young relative and you're holding their hand, this is the type of decision you need to make when to walk out on the road. This will answer the question to when it's safe to drive out at any junction and help me immensely when I was learning to drive. Oh my god, there's a bloody bicycle. Nobody likes bicycles, just like no one likes roundabouts. I love roundabouts and I love bicycles. Now the most important part about a bicycle yards, on your driving right, test is, is it safe to High overtake? Street. How you answer that question is by checking your interior mirror, right mirror, to see if there's any overtaking traffic, and then look well ahead, have good visibility, make sure that there's no oncoming traffic. And if there's enough space for you to pass the bicycle safely, do this as quickly as you can, without After exceeding the speed yards, limit, as this right. is the safest way of overtaking in any situation. We are approaching the Iron Bridge. This is a good landmark. We've been told by Gloria to turn right. The road markings are extremely faint. However, it's very simple. Whenever we're turning right, what lane do we use? So as you can see, Ellie has positioned herself correctly for her next junction. She's identified the road markings, right, done her mirrors, A41, done her signal. She's slowing down street. on the approach and positioning into the center. This is called a box junction. If we need to wait, we wait in that box in the center of the main road until it's safe to turn into hey, Ellie, the when side it's road. Safe. I'd like you to show me how you'd wash the rear window. Well, I don't think we've ever done that one before. Okay, leave it, that's fine. Just follow the road ahead. I'll show you that later. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> and then we can dry it. Yeah. I thought to myself I should ask you that because I'd just been looking at them. Videos? Yeah. I don't know how to do it in this car. After 200 yards, turn left, Chester Road. Road. Right to pull over and stop on the left on the yellow line. Don't worry about the driveways on this occasion. Okay, um, I'm going to do your manoeuvre here. Okay. It's a re reverse park exercise. Yeah. We've done this before? Yes. Okay, cool. 
Right, so what I'm going to ask you to do is to move out and stop side by side with the red vehicle in front. Yeah. And then reverse park within two car lengths, finish a reasonable distance on the kerb. Okay. There's a driveway there. Obviously, again, just disregard the driveway. Don't go on the driveway. Just imagine it's a raised kerb. Mm -hmm. And you can stop in front of the driveway. Okay. Okay. Any questions? No. All right, when you're ready. done it wrong. Can I try again? Try again. Mm, I remember right they give you... Hmm? You think I'm okay? Okay. Yeah. Um, it's up to you though. Do you feel like you're finished? I What's... feel like I'm a bit bent. Okay. You see the space that you have in front of you? You're allowed to use that to move forwards and correct the position if you need to. Yeah. That's lovely. Okay. Drive on when you're ready. <laughs> I'm so nervous. I really it's need right. to stop. Oh, that's good. All right. Okay. Just come. We'll take a break here. Yeah. Yes. Um, the question. Yes. The show me question. So how to wash the windows. I can, I can see it here, but mm -hmm. I, was, I didn't want to take my eyes off the road too much. So this one's forward. Mm hmm. That's a secret button. That's on the edge. So you yeah. know these buttons on the edge. Mm -hmm. Push it in all the way. Deeper. There you go. Ah, and this one down here. That's to operate the window wipers. Oh, okay. So if you twist this, this will put the window wipers on. Mm -hmm. And all the ways are really fast. And then you get like slow, medium Yeah. in between. Uh, to wash the back window is that one there. So you just press it. Mm, it's like you're pinching, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you just hold it down and then let it go. Yeah. Okay. Pretty easy. Yes. Do you want to chill here for a little bit longer or? Yeah. Yeah? No. <laughs> just going to get rid of the drips on the window. We yeah. can stay here if you want. It's up to you. Do you know what? I think it's because it, oh, it's going to sound so silly, but mm. it's just so busy. It is. And I, yeah. probably my fault that I've not really done lessons at this kind of time. Okay. And uh, I probably should have been doing that you know yeah yeah it's different at this time of the day because yes, there's just like double the amount of people yeah. on the road you've been doing very well as you've been going through the really stressful situation back <laughs> there by the school and um, we handled that nicely okay um there's not too much i can say because we're on a mock test yes, yeah i know i know when we get to yeah. the end there i'll give you some advice though there's some little yes, tips please. i'll give you yes. okay um, so I've got OCD, so I'm just going to try and get rid of those drips that keep running down in front of yeah. me. Yeah, so you've done that well. Um, okay. That was nice. So, yeah, it's a big, big change, I understand. Mm. But you're handling it. Yeah. I mean, it's not like, um, yeah, it's just different. And I feel like I'm just an anxious person anyway. So being, like, thinking about so many things. But it's good, obviously, because you need to know for your test and everything. Yeah, if you're going to be driving, um, 
you should be able to drive in all kinds of situations. Ideally, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to just be able to drive at like 10 to 1. <laughs> and then just think, I'm not going to drive because it's like 2 to 4. <laughs> it depends on yeah your lifestyle, I guess. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, yeah. you just can't. So. You're still quite young. You're not going to be just these time slots. You're going to be know. all time slots, aren't I you? Know. So. Just take a breath. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Sat nav. All right, do me a favor. Yeah. Just push that button and switch the engine off. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then that will give me a chance to stick this back on. I think because it's warm, sometimes when it's hot, these suckers come yeah. a little bit. And do you know what, loose. though? Because um, that bit where we were coming out onto the main road. Mm -hmm. I don't know, should I not say this? Should we wait till the end? You can say whatever you like, it's fine. This, this is clean yeah, anyway, so I uh, don't know why I'm turning it over, but yeah, go on. When we were at the thing and I rolled back a little bit. Yeah. Like that was, I could have just put my, like, I could have just put my foot on the brake. I don't know why, like, it took me a second to do that. But I, I panicked and then I, it affected me, like, for, I don't know. A few minutes afterwards, yeah. yeah. And I was just... If I did that on the test, well, I don't know. I mean, it's a good example that you don't know what could happen. You just can't panic. Mm -hmm. um, the way I look at events like that is, you know, what happened? Yeah. How did it happen? Mm. So anything we could do to try and change that? Yes. And then just remembering it, and then maybe next time we do change something, so it's less yes. likely to happen again. You yes. know, so it's just all experiences, isn't it? Yes. So that experience was a bit of a hill. Yeah. And you experienced it rolling mm. back a little bit. And do you know what? I've never, like, I've not rolled back ever. I so know. for me, I was like, oh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, what do I do? <laughs> yeah. So what do you do? You put your foot on the brake. There you go. Oh, yeah. oh God. <laughs> Just take a breath and move on from it. That's what I struggle with is I dwell on it and I think, oh, God, I failed. I failed. Mm -hmm. Just for that, I failed. Everybody dwells on that. Yeah. You just saw Sabah's story. Yes. Um, yeah. She was saying she thought she failed the whole way through the test pretty much. Yeah. Because um, she hit the curb. Mm. Yeah. And what happened? She passed. I don't know. I'm just like, we talk like I'm such a perfectionist in everything. You're not alone. <laughs> yeah, and it's just... Uh, just need to shake it off and move on. Yeah, it's easier said than done. Yeah, it is. But I heard someone, since as you said shake it off, there's one guy I listened to. I consider him to be like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he said, have yeah. you ever watched a duck, like ducks in the park, and they fight? No, right? I've never seen that. So if the ducks come and they fight each other, then yeah. they just go their separate ways. But when they go their separate ways, they shake it. Uh, they shake all their energy yeah. off. Yeah. He said he yeah, watches really animals, his Zen masters, oh. cats. Yeah, they are quite Zen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if we just maybe adapt that kind of style in our life, I don't know, maybe mm. we'll become a Zen master, who knows? Yeah. But shaking it off, getting that energy off, that's yeah. actually, I believe in that. I believe in that big time. So, yeah, literally shake it off, take a breath. Four breaths, in fact. So this is another technique. She's got me started, guys, so what can I say? Um, Sorry. <laughs> there's, a, there's a technique that the special forces teach. Um, so in a very difficult situation. Yeah. Love, this is still a thing. Don't look at me like I'm some kind of commando trainer or something. But I've heard it from them, right? So it's four seconds in. Four seconds out. And if you do that four times, they call it the 4-4. Four, four. Yeah. It just kind of resets slows, you. yeah, resets you, slows the heart yeah. rate, gives you a moment to kind of catch, you know, the situation. I don't know how to explain it, but I know what you mean. It works. Yeah, just breathing. Yeah, just breathing. It is the simplest way of living. It's just that simple. It's crazy. Um, yeah. There's a lot of people preaching it. We're well, not preaching it, but. Yeah, of, it's more you see a lot of it online and stuff, yeah. There's a lot yeah. of big people that yoga and stuff like that. Okay, I'll stop talking now. Take your time. When it's safe, drive on. Again, we're in the situation where we have parked cars on both sides of the road. 
This means that if there's oncoming traffic, we may need to slow down and allow space for the oncoming traffic to pass through. The best way to make this decision is to look at the oncoming traffic speed. If the vehicle is increasing in speed, there's a high chance that you'll need to move over, make space for the vehicle to pass, as it was most likely not going to stop for you. And the opposite. So if you look at the oncoming vehicle speed is slowing down, there's a high chance that it will pull over and stop for you to make progress. So again, the best advice I can give you for judging a meeting situation and whether you'll need to stop or not is by the speed of the oncoming at the end vehicle. Of the road, turn right, Hallowell Road. Ellie's now about to come towards the end of the road where the visibility is really restricted. In driving instructor's terms, we call this a closed junction and you'll be able to assess whether you need to come to a complete stop or not by looking at the white lines down the centre of the road. Five white lines start and then it's the end Turn of right. the road. If we look at the third line and we cannot view the new road clearly, we must come to a complete stop at the end of the road. If the visibility is still impaired, we call this a closed junction and you must do the practice of peep and creep, edging out slowly, looking in both directions multiple times to assess whether it's a safe time to continue driving out. At the end of the road, Turn left, B469, Green Lane, then take the second right. Turn left, then take the second right. Here Ellie is on a hill, and again just before she moves off after stopping, rolls a little bit back. This is marked down as a driver fault, again for control, foot brake. Road. Ellie also stops at the correct position, the first stop line before the traffic light, preventing the vehicle from entering into the bicycle box in front, which is only for cyclists. If we do enter into this area on our driving test, we may receive a serious driver fault. This is super important. Now that we're at the crossroads, Generally, the rule for crossroads is that two vehicles can wait in the center of the road before turning right. Ellie's the first vehicle, so she moves slowly into the junction, staying alongside the center line on the road that she's currently on and coming to a stop in line with the center line of the road that she's turning into. If it's safe and there's no oncoming traffic, or maybe you have a green filter light arrow on your traffic light, this can make it a safe time to complete your right turn at the crossroads. In summary, when turning right, the most important part is your position. Unless there are parked vehicles or hazards, we don't want to be over the center line, we must be next to the center line and then align with the new road center line before we turn, preventing us from cutting corners. This again is another driver fault where we may turn too early into the new road and go into oncoming traffic. Unless it's necessary, again because of park vehicles or hazards, try to prevent yourself from going over the center line and aligning alongside both center lines. This is the correct position and the most important part about right turns. After 200 yards, turn right, Frithwood Avenue. Here Ellie demonstrates the correct position. After passing the parked cars before her right turn, she repositions back to the turn center right. line, preventing herself from being over into oncoming traffic. Ellie only starts to turn right once she's reached the center line of the new road preventing her from cutting corners and going I'd like into to find a traffic. safe place or a convenient place to pull up on the left, please. When it's safe, drive on.
when it's safe, or I'd like you to find a safe place to pull up on the left again, please. Test. You go pull over and stop, and then move away, and pull over and yeah. stop, move away. One last time. Pull over and stop on the left. Thank you very much. All right. Do me a favor. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Just push that button for me, please. Thank you. That's the end of your independent drive. Um, push that button again. Thank you. And I'll give you directions from now on. Okay. okay. So when you're ready and it's safe, drive on. And at the end of the road, turn right. Yeah. Thank you. What's extremely common before students and even driving instructors like Mark at Driving Test Tips, if you haven't seen Mark's driving mock test on the videos and you haven't seen my mock test on his channel, Driving Test Tips, please go check that out. It's a really good fun, good laugh. Anyways, back to the point. Um, before driving instructors, Mark, or students move away, most of the time people forget the P in the POM routine. Uh, what POM stands for is prepare, observe, move. Now, these must be done in order, and the prepare part, if you're in a manual car, would be to put the clutch down and gain first gear. You could add to that by putting signals, and this could be part of the preparation. Ellie needs to put the car into drive. She does this, making sure she's prepared, doing her all-round observations, which is the O part of the routine, and then M for move. So again, in summary, POM, prepare, observe, move, and Mark, just in case you need a little refresher lesson, make sure you put the car into gear first, then do your observation second, signal if it benefits other road users, and get a move on. The examiners don't want you to dilly-dally, making six-point observations super slow and tedious to only have another vehicle come along in the process. Make sure you're prepared, your signal's engaged, do a quick little mirror check to check the roads through your traffic, then do your all-round observations from least dangerous blind spot to most dangerous blind spot before moving off. <laughs> that time of the day? Yes. It's far too easy to get anxious at busy junctions and feel like you've missed an opportunity to go. Going back to the beginning of this video, we said, is it safe to walk out? If it's safe to walk out, it's most likely a safe time to drive out. And this will really help you to avoid getting too anxious at any junction on your driving test and know when it's a safe opportunity to go. Okay, um, if it's safe, I'd like to show me how you wash the rear window. Amazing, thank you very much. At the first roundabout, turn left, and the second roundabout, turn right.
If you stayed with us up until now, then an extra special thank you to you. Hopefully you're learning and gaining some value from this video. And if you are, please tap that like button. Remember the algorithm knows that this video is a good video from the likes and it will really help to extend the reach of this video to hopefully help others. When on those boring driving lessons with that naggy driving instructor that keeps shouting at me to check all my mirrors, well, if you're in a similar situation like Ellie and you're practicing for the big day and there's not really a lot going on on the road that you're currently on, the DVSA used to recommend checking all your mirrors roughly every six to 10 seconds. So again, if it's safe and there's not a lot going on, don't wait for your naggy driving instructor to shout at you to check all the mirrors. Why not start to train yourself? Check all the mirrors. This way you're gonna be more aware and plan effectively. You'll see any filtering traffic like motorcycles or cyclists before they're about to overtake. At the end of the road, I'd like you to turn right, uh, sorry, I'd like you to turn left, please, left. Thank you. If you've got a very silly driving instructor like this guy and they get the directions incorrect, or maybe you misheard your examiner, you can always do self-commentary and repeat the direction out loud and I'm sure the examiner will be more than willing to correct it if it was a different direction. You can also ask your examiner, sorry, was that left? And then they will probably confirm the directions to you. We call this self-commentary or a two-way conversation. If you're engaging and you're willing and able to do this on your driving test, it can be a good tip to try and help you clarify your directions. On a side note that is super important, would it be okay to turn left, providing we've done it safely, even though our driving test examiner or satnav has told us to turn right? If you have said yes, then you'd be correct because when we're on a driving test, we're being assessed on our ability to drive safely on public roads. This does not mean that we're constantly taking the correct turns, as in life, sometimes we make mistakes, but providing that we demonstrate and be a safe driver on the public roads, this would not be considered a driver fault. It's really important that you know this before taking a driving test. Okay, Lee, at the roundabout, I'd like you to take the fourth exit turning right, sign, uh, signposted East Coat. Safety is more important than direction. However, let's talk about the direction we've just been given for the next roundabout. We've been told a number, the fourth exit. But more importantly, we've been given direction, right. Now quite commonly when we're turning right, we will need the right lane and we will also need to signal right. This is part of our routine for junctions. This is the MSPSL routine. That stands for mirrors, signal, position, speed and look. So as Ellie's approaching this roundabout, she's been given directions, fourth exit turning right. That means we need to check our interior mirror, right mirror, and signal right, as you've just seen Ellie do, roughly 10 to five car lengths before the junction. Next, we'll be positioning into the right lane. Then we'll be slowing down from running to jogging to walking speed and possibly coming to a stop at the junction. Finally, we will look. There's a minimum of right, left, right. We always double check the right side as it's the most dangerous side and we wait for a safe opportunity to emerge out at the junction. After seeing a safe opportunity to emerge, we must keep our lane discipline. Luckily for us, we have nice road markings here. As we approach the third exit, because we're taking the fourth exit, we need to now check our interior mirror, left exterior mirror, and signal left to make other road users aware that we are going to exit the roundabout. Also, it's very important that you know that pedestrian crossings are often very close to junctions. So scan the road ahead effectively and be prepared to slow or stop if there are pedestrians using the crossing. What mirror do we need to check if we're changing speed? So on the driving test report, we have a category for mirror checks and one of them says change speed. 
This means that when we're slowing down or stopping, providing it's not an emergency, we want to check our interior mirror to judge the flow of traffic behind, and we can act on the information that we see accordingly. Here we are on Joel Street, and we're almost back to the test centre. We have a very busy high street here, and as you notice, the parking bays are diagonal. The vehicles in front, if they are going to position in order to reverse park into these diagonal bays, do a very funny kind of body movement. This is what I call body movement from the cars. They wiggle in and then wiggle out. This is what I call the wee woo. And this is why, because they're reversing we'll take the next into a diagonal parking space. So if you see the body language of the vehicle in front going wiggle wiggle and then reversing, you now know why. Make sure that we provide enough space for the vehicle in front to complete its maneuver, otherwise we're going to cause a jam on the main road traffic. This is the tunnel that we had at the beginning of the driving test center. Here we're not coming from a blind bend and we can really see the road ahead efficiently. We can make a very good informative and safe decision if it's safe to enter the tunnel. Looking ahead, we don't see any oncoming traffic and we're keeping a safe distance from the vehicle in front, which is effectively going to stop any oncoming traffic from entering into the tunnel. Once we approach the blind bend up ahead, it's so important that you keep to the left as too many people drive around the blind bend into the center of the road. And if there is any oncoming traffic, this will be the position that the oncoming traffic will be in. So we must come over to the left where these double yellow lines are and keep this left side as we go round this right blind bend. Okay, Ellie, I'd like to take the next road on the right. Judge the road by the road markings. See the single line? This is an entry to a new road, and this will identify where the correct position is to turn in at this triangle junction. Some do get confused, like I did on my driving test, and we go beyond the first entry and towards the second entry to the side road, which makes the angles extreme and very difficult to keep the car accurate and controlled to turn in. So again, look for the road markings as single lines are entries into new side roads. We're about to come towards the end and Ellie will receive her debrief in full with all the tips and tricks. Thank you for watching and I hope you get some valuable feedback from this video which will help you to pass your driving test first time. Good luck. I need to pull over and stop on the left please, just before that white car. Just edge up to where the driveway starts. Mm -hmm. And just stop us anywhere here, it's fine. Amazing, thank you very much. And switch the engine off. That is the end of your test. Thank you very much. Right, how do you feel that went? Um, I think it could have gone better because I was nervous. Okay. And I think maybe rolling back might have made me fail. Ooh, the rolling back, huh? Yeah. Right, so... Everyone's joined us now. Everyone can see you, so now they're going to join and now they're going to be like, What's going on? Oh my god, did you pass? Did you fail? Would you like me to tell you? Yes. <laughs> Congratulations, you've passed! So everyone's passing today. Now, I do, I do have a bone to pick with you though, Ellie. Yes. The rolling back. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, how can we avoid that? Because it happened a couple of times, didn't it? So yeah, there are four yeah. driver faults. Okay, we'll go yeah, over those yeah. one by one. Yeah. But uh, it's the rolling back that was the main thing. So yes, yeah. why do you think that's happening? Um, I don't really know, if I'm honest with you. In my car, when I get to the top of a hill, I would put my handbrake on. I saw and you I reaching think, for the handbrake, yeah. yeah. And I think, um, I think I'm a bit confused because over the weekend, I did a lot in my car. So okay. coming back into this car is... Different. Know, yeah, it's different. Yep. But I can't fully blame that because I wasn't, I don't think I put my brake, brake on hard enough when you, I needed to. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's really nice 
is that you have a very gentle foot. So when you're mm -hmm. pressing the pedals, it's very gentle. Yeah. And you've got quick reflexes as well. I've noticed that. Oh, but I'm going to try and give you a bit of a tip in a second. Yes. But just to the braking. So you've got a very nice gentle braking and stopping. Yeah. Um, with this vehicle, you did mention vehicles are different. That's totally correct, by the way. Uh, so your vehicle, you'd slap the handbrake on. Yeah. All good. Yeah? yeah, this vehicle, no handbrake, yes. bit different. So what you'd want to do in this vehicle is when you do stop, mm -hmm. you know, like you pull the handbrake, yeah. squeeze the brake. Yeah, I definitely wasn't putting it on hard enough. Yeah, let's give it a little squeeze. Yeah. And um, that can activate heel start technology, which oh, okay. will prevent you from rolling back. But even if it doesn't get activated, mm -hmm. it will still stop you from rolling back. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right. So there are two driver faults for that. I put them down as the yes, foot yeah. brake. So if you do stop in this vehicle on the hill, just maybe give a little bit of a squeeze on the brake and that will prevent it from rolling yeah. back. I'm surprised there were any minors. Your friend's Again. back. Again. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> We got the horse. I didn't know there were stables around here. Yeah, stables at the top of the road. Oh God. <laughs> um, yeah, so watch out for the horses. Yeah. Okay, right, two other driver faults here. We have the reverse park exercise. I think you mm -hmm. didn't want it, and I think that's why you said, can I go forwards? Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, you, you knew you were gonna pick up a minor fault for correcting, was mm -hmm. that it? I think, um... I don't know, I think I was just in a headspace that was probably quite anxious from the rolling back and okay. I just needed yeah. a pause, reset. Yeah, but I know you can't do that on a test. You can. You can ask the oh. examiner, you can say, look, I'm just getting very anxious at the moment. Is there a possibility if I could just take one or two minutes just to pull up and stop on the left? Mm. And just compose myself just for a couple of minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean it's not good really if you like if you're driving, you can't just if you've made a mistake, you can't just pull up on the left if you're on a motorway or something. Ideally, yeah, yeah, in the motorway, that'd be quite difficult. If there was a hard yeah. shoulder, it's emergency, usually mm -hmm. for breakdowns, okay? Yes. Because um, there's nothing worse than driving and you feel like something's going to happen. You know, if you're in that state, that edgy state, yeah. shaky state, mm -hmm. it's really important to pull over and stop, you know, and take a break. Yeah. Okay, right, um, so the reverse parking was good, it was very was good. It? Yeah. I really felt like I, I don't know, I think, um, I don't know, the, I think the camera. <laughs> I had forgotten how to do it with the camera. You did it. I know, um, yeah. You were correct when you did stop, mainly because at that point you were looking a little bit at the camera, the reverse camera, yeah. okay. Um, the front got a little bit... <clears throat> it was a bit, yeah. Okay, Thank but you. the space you had in front, you could move forwards and correct that. Mm -hmm. It was all round good manoeuvre, yeah. nice observations, good control. Just overthinking. That's yeah, sure. maybe the overthinking, yeah. yeah. Um, and then we move forward, so for correcting, it's absolutely fine, but you will get one driver fault, so you yes, just got yeah. a driver fault for the correction. Mm -hmm. And lastly, do you remember when I opened the door? Yeah. It was kind of... I know. Sh we call it yeah. shaving, so you're shaving yeah, the... Yeah, I know. The side of the cup. Did you see I was like smiling like, oh God, well, I'm, that I'm close? ruining Scott's car. Let yeah. me smile for the camera. Um, yeah, so you're shaving the curb. Did you feel it? Not really. Okay, all right. But I think I knew I was too close, but I didn't feel like anything. Okay, cool. Sorry. That's all right. It's, it's ruined anyway, so it's all good. It's part of, um, this is really annoying. It's part of the um, job. Yeah, you're going to get scuffed mm -hmm. wheels, yeah. you're going to get rims that are all scratched. Okay, um, that vibrating is super annoying. Thanks, Pratish. Um, okay, well, I've been Scott, this has been Ellie. Thank you for watching. Wish Ellie luck for a real test. Oh, God. Yes, please it? do. Yes, please do. <laughs> Comments below for YouTube. Go check out the YouTube. Oh, sorry, I was looking at TikTok. <laughs> yep, we got TikTok, we got YouTube. So go check out Ellie's full mock test video. If you haven't seen it here, you can go check it out on YouTube, Two Day Pass. All right, thanks again, Ellie, and stay safe, guys. We'll see you next time.